Do you wanna know how to catch more fish? Do you wanna know how to catch fish possibly every single trip? If you answered yes, then you need to know how to fish a plastic worm correctly. You gotta know the best way to fish a plastic worm. A plastic worm is a staple bait, and I'm gonna go into it, and I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about the plastic worm in today's video. But my dad and I used to call the plastic worm the old faithful, because when we couldn't get bit on anything else, we'd throw that plastic worm out there, and we'd work it real slow, and we would always manage to catch fish. And then everything that we talk about in today's video is gonna be linked down in the description. So if you missed something, or you wanna check out the equipment that we're talking about in today's video, make sure to go down in the description and make sure you use those links and there's also gonna be discount codes for you guys to save some money as well one of the great things about the plastic worm is it doesn't take a lot of components and those components are pretty inexpensive all you really need is a weight a worm and a hook this is the six cents ridge worm this is a great worm for the summertime so when it comes to the rod for fishing a plastic worm I like to go with a casting rod and a casting reel this reel is the Daiwa Tatula SV TW 7 0.1 to 1 gear ratio and this is the seven foot three medium heavy action six cents unicorn rod I really like this seven foot three medium heavy for my plastic worm fishing It gives you the ability to throw light weights like a quarter ounce up to a half ounce or even bigger if you need to um, I like to put 12 pound test fluorocarbon on here as well But you could pretty much use any rod from seven foot to about seven four it all kind of depends on what kind of cover you're fishing what kind of weights you're gonna be throwing and how big these fish are and how big of a line you're gonna to want to do you don't want to put super big line on a light action reel and a light action rod and you don't want to put light line on a really heavy rod so when it comes to the reel I don't recommend having a slow gear ratio you're gonna want something 6.3 or 6.2 to 1 and higher you can go up to those 8.1 to 1s and 8.3 to 1 gear ratios higher gear ratios is key because when you're fishing these plastic worms you have slack out there you have a lot of line out there and you're gonna to need to reel that slack up as quickly as possible when you get those bites to get that hook in the fish now when it comes to line on your plastic worm setup if I'm using a casting rod and casting reel like I have right here I'm using anything between 10 and 15 pound test now I have different rods and reel combos for those different ones I would recommend if you only have one reel and one rod to throw your plastic worms on, I'd go with 12 pound test. You're gonna be able to use that in the majority of your situations. A couple of my favorite brands of line, I don't have a line sponsor or anything like that guys, is a Seaguar Invisex or Seaguar Abrazex or a Sunline FC Sniper. And like I said, all this stuff's gonna be linked down in the description along with discount codes. Now there's a ton of different plastic worms out on the market, but a few of my favorite ones that I'm gonna feature in today's video is that six inch ridge worm like you saw already, 10 inch worm, nice unique kind of an action. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have these six cents glitch drop shot baits. These things are little tiny baits, but they flat out get bit guys. And then another one of my favorites is the divine shaky worm from six cents as well. This thing can be texture streak, it can be put on a shaky head, all those different techniques you can use exactly the same way that I'm gonna be describing here further in the video. So now we're gonna go into the best way to actually fish this plastic worm. We've talked about the whole setup, different baits, different combinations, and now we're gonna talk about actually fishing this plastic worm. Basically, what you wanna make sure of is you're casting to cover. It could be wood, it could be grass, it could be rock, but you wanna be casting to some sort of cover because that's where these bass live. You're gonna cast it out just like so, and then you're gonna let it sink all the way to the bottom. You've gotta let that thing sink all the way down to the bottom. It's a very, very key. If you don't let it sink all the way to the bottom, you're not gonna be getting bit. You might catch one here and there, but you're gonna be missing out on the numbers that you could be catching if you let it sink all the way to the bottom. So now that you have the bait out in the water, it's all the way down on the bottom. All you're gonna do is reel up that slack and you're gonna just slowly drag that bait on the bottom. Very, very slow and then you're gonna reel up that slack. You don't wanna reel the bait in, you wanna drag the bait in. That's another key thing as well. If you're reeling this bait in like this, you're not fishing it correctly. You want slow drags, just dragging that bait along the bottom. You wanna be feeling whatever that cover is. You wanna be feeling the rocks, you wanna be feeling the grass, you wanna be feeling that wood structure. And then after you drag it, 
you're just gonna let it sit there for a minute. You might shake it a little bit, but I think less is more in most situations. And you're just gonna keep doing this until you no longer feel that structure that you were targeting. You can drag this thing around and drag it all the way back to the boat or all the way back to the shore, but you wanna be focusing on that cover. You wanna be focusing on that structure. So I just drag it until I no longer feel the cover that I'm fishing and then I just reel it in and I make another cast. It just helps me and it would help you be more efficient with your fishing. We're about to get into what a bite feels like and then also those mistakes that fishermen make when fishing the plastic worm. But real quick, if you have any questions about anything that I've covered so far, make sure to leave that question down in the comment section. And if you don't have any questions, let me know what your go-to setup is for throwing a plastic worm down in the comments. I'd love to get a discussion going down there with you guys. So now that you know exactly what kind of a setup you're gonna to wanna to be using with the plastic worm, where to fish the plastic worm, and how to fish the plastic worm, you're gonna get bit now. So you wanna know what that bite feels like. Majority of the time that bite is gonna feel like a little tap tap coming through the line, coming through the rod, and then that's when you gotta let the fish take a little bit of line before setting the hook. If you set the hook too soon, you're gonna miss that fish. So occasionally you're not gonna feel that tap tap. And sometimes it'll just be a little skip in your line or you're gonna see that line start to move off. But the key is, is don't set the hook too soon. You wanna let that fish take the worm a little bit before setting the hook. Now I'm gonna give you a quick little demonstration on what I mean by not setting the hook. I'm gonna cast this thing out and then basically once it's on the bottom and you're dragging that thing back and now I got the bite. You don't wanna set the hook right away. You wanna just reel down, get that slack out of the line, and then set the hook. You wanna let the fish take it, you wanna reel up some of that slack, and then you wanna jack that fish. And when you set the hook fishing a plastic worm, you need to set the hook hard, especially if you're using casting equipment. If you got heavy line, you probably have a lot of line out there. Set that hook real hard and just start winding that reel. It will make a difference. It will help you get those fish out of cover and it's gonna help you land more fish because that hook's gonna get in a lot better. So now we're gonna get into four common mistakes that people make fishing a plastic worm. And I'm gonna go over these fairly quickly, but the first one is don't overwork this bait, guys. You don't wanna be giving it a whole bunch of action, shaking it like crazy, moving it real fast. You just, Like I said, you slow drags, reel up that slack, slow drag, reel up that slack, let it sit there for a little bit, don't overwork it. Don't give it too much action. Let the worm do the work for you down on the bottom. The second mistake is not having bottom contact. If you're fishing a plastic worm and you don't have bottom contact, you're missing out on tons and tons of bites. A plastic worm is a bottom presentation. You're dragging the bottom, you're feeling the rocks down there, you're feeling the wood down there, you're feeling that brush pile, you're feeling the grass down there. You gotta have bottom contact. If you don't have bottom contact, you're fishing this bait wrong. Mistake number three is people fish it way too fast. Like I showed you a second ago, guys are dragging it fast, reeling it up, dragging it fast, reeling it up, dragging it fast, reeling it up. You gotta reel it slow and you gotta drag it slow. When you drag that thing slow, it's reeling it up slow so that way you're not reeling that bait. You wanna be moving the bait with your rod tip and you wanna be doing it very, very slowly. Slow is the key with the plastic worm. Now depending on time of year, you can give it a little bit of a pop, you can drag it a little bit faster, but most of the time you're gonna get most of your bites when you're fishing this thing slow. And then mistake number four that I wanna mention is setting the hook too soon. Like I mentioned a second ago, when you get that bite, you gotta give that fish some line. You gotta give it a little bit of time to truly eat that worm, get it all the way in its mouth, and then you're gonna jack him. Too many people fish it like they're fishing a jig and you cast that thing out and as soon as you feel that bite, they're setting the hook and they might only have the tail of that worm and you just pulled that thing right out of their mouth. You gotta give it time to eat that thing. For whatever reason, with the plastic worm, they don't seem to inhale this thing all at one time. You gotta let them chew on it, get it in their mouth, and then set the hook. It's usually, you know, a one, two second count and then, then set the hook. A plastic worm should be a staple in your arsenal, no matter if you're fishing on a boat like I am or you're fishing on the bank. The plastic worm gets bit offshore, gets bit up shallow. You can fish a plastic worm pretty much anywhere in any condition and you're probably gonna figure out how to get some bites. Now we talked a lot about different gear, baits, reels, rods, line, all kinds of different stuff. So make sure to check the description down below to get those discount codes and please use those links so those companies know that I sent you. The plastic worm also works really, really well on a drop shot and I've done a video talking about different mistakes people make when fishing the drop shot. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure to click on the video that's on the screen right now and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.